hair production was first seen by Carl Anderson at Caltech in 1932. Anderson was recording cosmic rays when a cosmic ray penetrated a lead plate and then entered a cloud chamber. In the magnetic field of a cloud chamber, suddenly two particles seemingly came from nowhere, produced two paths like these. The two particles curved in opposite directions in the magnetic field. What can you say about the charges of those two particles? They must be oppositely charged. So the magnetic forces on those two particles make them curve in opposite directions. It turns out that a high energy gamma ray photon near an atomic nucleus can disappear and produce a pair of particles, an electron and a positron. A positron is just like an electron. They have the same mass, the same amount, but the opposite charges. By the way, the antiparticle positron was predicted by Dirac in 1928. One thing I want to emphasize is that antimatter, material composed of antiparticles, does not have negative mass. Antimatter like a positron has positive mass. Mixing matter and antimatter can lead to the annihilation of both. Just like mixing an antiparticle and a particle leads to the annihilation of both. We will discuss pair annihilation in the next lesson. Now, pair production has to happen near a nucleus so that both energy and the momentum can be conserved. When a photon turns into two particles with mass, we have photon energy turning into mass. This is consistent with Einstein's mass energy equivalence and his famous equation E equals to mc squared. This means uh, to have pair production, the photon must carry at least uh, the mc squared of the electron plus the mc squared of the positron. Since an electron and the positron have the same mass, it means the energy of the gamma ray, which means hf of the gamma ray, cannot be less than twice the mc squared of an electron. Now let's look at an example. What is the energy of a gamma ray photon if it produces an electron-positron pair with a total kinetic energy of 2 mega EVs? The mass of an electron is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31st kilograms, which is also 0.511 mega EV over C squared. For this problem, we have to use the conservation of mass energy. We have to combine mass and energy together for the law of conservation because we're now dealing with problems when mass can turn into energy and energy can turn into mass. So let's see, before the pair production, we have a photon with a photon energy. After the pair production, we have two particles with kinetic energy. And uh, the two particles, uh, they have mass which means that we have the mc squared of the electron and the mc squared of the positron. And because these two, they have the same mass, that means we have twice the mc squared of the electron. So this will be the kinetic energy, 2 mega EVs, plus 2 times the mass, the mass of the electron. Because this is in mega EVs, that means it will be more convenient for us to use that mass. So that is 0.511 mega EV over C squared. And this is only the mass part. So I have to multiply that by C squared. And look what happens to the C squared. They cancel, and this will give me 3.022 mega EVs. And this is the answer because this is how much the photon energy is.